Greetings to our viewing audience. We are so excited that you are here. Uh, my name is Catherine Noll. I'm the Senior Vice President of the Northern Region of the Heart Association, and I get to work with our great states of Michigan, Wisconsin, and Minnesota. And it is my privilege to be here today with Dr. Scalaris, uh, who is going to talk to, her, to talk to us about her research and the great things that she is doing. And so, Dr. Scalaris, we appreciate the time uh, that you are spending with us today, your support of our mission uh, in Southeast Michigan and Metro Detroit. And before I get into questions uh, specifically about your research, tell us a little bit about who you are and what you do. Sure, thank you. Thank you for having me. I'm delighted to chat with you all today. So I am a stroke neurologist at the University of Michigan. I co-direct the stroke program. Uh, I've been here for about uh, 13 years and my major passion and sort of role in my department is uh, health equity. So I run multiple projects focused on health equity um, uh, to try to decrease uh, disparity, racial disparities primarily in cardiovascular disease. Stroke ready. You know, I, when I think about those words, they have a very specific meaning to me as my mother had a stroke at the age of 54 and survived. Talk about what those words mean to you and your team and the work that you're doing and how that work has directly impacted the community. Thank you. This is something I just love to talk about. So uh, for the last 13 years, we have worked on a project um, called Stroke Ready in partnership with the Flint community. So the type of research we do is called community-based participatory research, where there are academics like me and researcher, um, academic researchers and community members who partner to really identify community needs and then work together to try to reduce those needs. And so Stroke Ready has been focused on getting people um, getting more people to the hospital to receive acute stroke treatments, whether it's um, something in their IV to dissolve the clot or something um, that we can go in and remove the clot. Um, but the first step in being able to receive those medicines is recognizing the stroke symptoms and get to the hospital just as soon as possible. The faster people get there, the better these treatments work. So we started about, um, we started about 13 years ago working primarily with black churches in Flint. Um, and we developed this intervention, which we call Stroke Ready. Um, and we tested it in about 100 people and found that it seemed to prove people's knowledge of stroke symptoms and the importance of calling 911. We're now working on the second, much larger iteration of that where we have worked with the hospitals in Flint to optimize their acute stroke pathways. And now we've just finished out rolling out a community-wide intervention where we trained about 30 peer educators in the community up, um, to then go out and deliver this, our stroke education, stroke ready education module, module to the community. And we are proud to say we've reached about 5,000 adults in Flint. Um, we're now awaiting the results to see if we um, to see if we increase acute stroke treatment rates. But I think from my standpoint, uh, regardless that just the proof of concept that we can train people in the community to really become stroke experts and really sort of increase the capacity of the community at large to recognize and understand the importance of acute stroke treatments feels like I'm just really proud of my team. They've done just a really amazing job. That is great. I remember, you know, back in the late 90s when we first started to see treatments around stroke, we had about 13% of our population in Michigan that could name one warning sign of stroke. I know that was some of our baseline data and yeah. it's so great to see how you and your team and the work that you're doing is continuing to get people uh, stroke ready, uh, yeah. as we say. So it just seems like that. such a missed opportunity to me. Like from my, you know, clinical work, we go into the emergency room and just hearing these stories of, you know, people saying like, "Oh, my hand was a little weak," and then I didn't know what to do, so I took a nap, and now I'm here. And now I can't move my my left side. Can you help me? You're like, "Oh, I could have helped you so much more earlier." So it yeah. really does stem from the like, community is really an important piece in that in that pathway. 
Well, I love, we're going to talk about wearable health technology today. And, and uh, yeah, I've got my wearable. Oh. <laughs> um, you know, we were excited as the American Heart Association to fund the Health Technology Research Center and the work that, that you all are doing around that. Talk a little bit about it. It's, it's such an exciting field and opening up so many opportunities. Oh, I totally agree. So this, this actually stemmed from Stroke Ready. So, you know, as I mentioned, this is a community academic partnership. And at some point, our community partner said, this is great, your, your little call 911 thing that you're interested in, but we really don't, we want to, we don't really want to have a stroke. So we want to do stroke prevention. Um, and so this was really a community driven initiative. And so um, we, st um, and we have evolved in our use of technology in these community initiative interventions. So we initially worked, um, uh, again, we're partnered with black churches and did a text messaging intervention like 10 years ago now. And this has sort of, um, you know, evolved into the, into our Wiredell, um, project, which is the, which is what we call our wearables project now. And so the idea, of uh, Behind Wiredell is that uh, is that it's uh, it, it's it's a just in time adaptive intervention. So they call them Jedi's. So basically, we will use wearables in our phones to understand the context um, with which people are in to to send them hyper personalized messages to promote healthy eating or low sodium diet and physical activity with the hope to reduce their blood pressure with the goal to reduce their blood pressure. Um, so I think it's kind of taking technology to the next level, um, which I'm really excited to, uh, to test out. That's amazing. And, you know, I, as adults, we all need help with those behavior changes, right? Behavior change is hard and I need, um, I need encouragement too, we all do. And so it's great that we're looking at how can we do that, especially in that moment when someone has hypertension or has other risk factors. Um, and we're trying to, as you said, prevent that stroke. Talk a little bit about how you and your team decided specifically to focus on this area of work. Yeah, uh, uh, be because so, so hypertension is the most prominent risk factor for stroke. Um, and I think if we really want to reduce sh our stroke incidence rates or the number of people having a stroke, we really have to, we really have to move those hypertension numbers. And so, and we're committed to, again, we're committed to health equity and we know that our black patients or our black, black people in our communities have much higher rates of hypertension than the, than our white patients or white people in the communities. So we felt it really important to develop, uh, develop and test interventions and technology in partnership with the populations that really need it the most. I think that's great. And, you know, many people talk about health equity and how important it is, but it really is getting granular with it, right? And making yeah. sure that we are doing the work, um, having those boots on the ground in the community to make that to make that broader impact. And we so appreciate you and your team um, doing that. Talk about how research like this um, can impact lives throughout the country. How do we take this and then use what you all have learned to save lives in other places and spaces? I think that's one of the most convincing reasons to, to work with wearables or work with technology because it's so scalable. Um, you know, it, nearly everybody has a phone uh, um, and wearables are becoming more and more common and we can push out the interventions through the wearables and through, through apps. And so it really does have a huge potential to make an impact much broader than um, some other interventions, which are much more high touch. So there's lots of interventions that may work, but they're really, they're really complicated in terms of resources needed or pe um, resources needed in terms of people or, um, or infrastructure to roll out where I think that the, the really, the beauty of, of wearables and technology and apps is that, the, that they're much more scalable. Yeah, again, it goes back to hitting the easy button, right? And yeah. So um, 
talk a little bit about how these innovations will assist healthcare providers in creating equity for patients. You know, we talked about that being something that we have to, we have to get in the weeds on and, and find solutions for and, and talk a little bit more about how this will create that, that equity. I think it really makes, I think that our goal in, in, in our center is to really make patients and providers partners. So it's not seen as, as a one-way, one-way street where you get your blood pressure measured when you come to the doctor's office and then, and then that's it. And then you, everyone sort of stop thinking about it until the next time it's to really put that, put the empower patients to put the power into, to, to empower them to realize like, Hey, I can take my blood pressure. I can share these results with my, with my doctor. And then things can change based on those, based on those numbers. But until we're kind of, until we've solved the the, or address the problem of, of more active in rural engagement from both the patients and the providers. I think that's what we're hoping that our intervention does. It just sort of brings it into the, it, into more front and center in people's minds. Hypertension is, is people don't feel bad when they have it. You don't know a lot of times. And so just, I think just adding an increased emphasis on, on the blood pressure and communicating with providers, I think is, is one, one way we can address this problem. And what a great way for patients to be conscious of their health all the time, right? Yeah. You know, and just be monitoring it. Not that it has to be always front and center in their minds, but just to have their hand on the pulse, um, pun, did, pun intended, I guess, um, <laughs> of, of their healthcare. And, and to be able to have some ability to um, play a role in that um, on a day-to-day -day basis. Anything else I didn't ask you about that you want us to know about this research? We are, are so excited to have funded this effort and, and just anything else you want us to, to know? Yeah, I would like to share how we developed um, the app and the technology because I think it is a really good example of how working with communities uh, really does have the opportunity to change what the what the uh, uh, what the interventions look like or what the tools look like. So um, we had a uh, community design team that was composed of the academics and our community partners that sort of went through multiple iterations of the of development of the grant, getting feedback from the community at every, every step of the way. One, one thing that we quickly identified was the importance of social support in communities and how we're gonna provide social support on an app, right? It's not like we can like, you know, touch people or engage with people. So how are we going to, how are we going to do that? So we, we came up with a, um, a strategy of community generated messages. So we we are going to send messages through the app that are again hyper that are really contextualized and tailored. Um, but we also have a bank of messages that we created that were written by the community that will also get sent out. So we worked with uh, Hamilton Community Health Centers, which is the FQHC in Flint, and then also here in Ann Arbor at the, our cardiovascular center at University of Michigan to, to number one, have our have patients or participants sort of read the messages that, that we were planning to send that research generated and edit them. And then two, develop their own set of messages that we are now gonna send out. And they'll be notified from Flint community member or from Ann Arbor community member. And the messages are really different. Um, and so the, the, the community messages are really a lot more, um, are have a lot more, empathy or grace in them, like it really acknowledging, like sometimes you'll have a bad day, but, but it's okay, keep going. Um, there's a lot more of uh, language about we, we, we're in this together, we can do it. Um, and there's a lot more religiosity um, and spirituality, which we did not include in our research generated messages. And then finally, there's a lot more about um, addressing social determinants of health. So 
instead of, you know, a research generated messages would be something like go to the, you know, when you're at the store, get low salt foods where a community generation message would was that sometimes there's not low salt choices available. Take the bus to another um, grocery store to to assess lower salt options. So I think things like that that are really um, uh, innovative and really just show the power of partnership between communities and 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 academic researchers. I think is um, just so critical to really really promoting health equity. I think that is great. And you know, it really is about where people trust yeah. those messages coming from as well. You know, I want to just double click on something real quick. You talked about FQHCs and not everyone in our viewing audience oh, may sorry. know what that is or why that population specifically matters, especially as we're talking about equity. Could you talk just briefly about that? Yep. Yeah, sorry, my bad. That's no, it's okay. <laughs> uh, so FQHC stands for Federally Qualified Health Centers, or some folks call them community health centers. And they are really um, part of our country's safety net system to care for our most, uh, uh, our most, some of our most vulnerable populations. So they primarily serve a middle aged or younger population. Um, um, with most of whom are Medicaid or uninsured populations, and they have often have high needs, and so high social needs, um, and and the part of the um, part of our really motivation in, in Wiredell of working with this population, just in, in addition that it is a often minoritized population with high needs is that it's a middle-aged population, which we know in terms of hypertension, it's a really key population to reach to, to decrease blood pressure. So in our sense, it's a, they're really sort of our key partners. Um, and I know that HA, HA has a big initiative working with, with FQHCs too, that I just like to give a shout out to say, thank you. I think that's a really good idea. Um, and uh, I think the more we can work with, um, uh, work together, I think we'll really accomplish all of our goals. Yeah, and thank you. We, um, we have a special place in our heart for our FQHCs and, and the work that we're doing around hypertension with them. And, and you know, the things that relate to hypertension, you know, it's, it's one thing to say to eat well, but you, they might be experiencing nutrition insecurity, or it's another thing to say, hey, be physically active to help address your hypertension, but they may not have a safe space to do that. And so we are looking for solutions and working towards that and appreciate the work that you're doing and how it's going to tie into really tailoring those messages for, for, for patients. And so appreciate uh, our work together and I appreciate your time. I know you are incredibly busy, uh, but appreciate you just explaining to our our audience, the work that you're doing and, um, and how we're moving forward to make such great advances. So thank you for your time today. Thank you. Bye-bye. <laughs>